Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome Dr. Katherine Albrecht to It's Rainmaking Time. Dr. Albrecht is the author of a major blockbuster critical book called Spy Chips, How Major Corporations and Governments Plan to Track Your Every Purchase and Watch Your Every Move. This is a book that all of you need to have, every one of you, no matter what your beliefs and opinions are. You need to understand this technology and how it's being used and what it's about. But also, recently, I found out that Dr. Albrecht is head of media relations for a wonderful up-and-coming company called Startpage.com. It's a new search engine that does not track all your information. But I'm not the one to tell you about it. Please welcome Dr. Katherine Albrecht to its rainmaking time. Good morning. Hey, Kim. It's a delight to be on your program, and I'm so glad that you're giving a forum for these really important issues that, that I think not only affect us all now, but as people become more aware, I think they're going to be affecting us more and more in the future. Let me just tell you how I first began to be concerned about what's happening with search engines. I had a client who worked at JPL who I was servicing in 2007, and he shared with me that Google purchased 1 million square feet on JPL's property, and of course, JPL is NASA, and I wondered why. I'm not a uh, paranoid person. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I consider myself very good at doing due diligence, connecting of the dots, and doing intelligence gathering. On a basic level, it didn't feel right to me, and now I find out that the National Security Agency and Google are, in fact, coming up with an agreement together. So that leaves me to finding out about this new search engine and really what it's about. I'd love to talk about it and have you share with the public why you're head of U.S. media relations. Yeah, well, here's here's the thing, and the reason why I sought out StartPage, and, and let me spell it for people. It's start, like S-T-A-R-T, and the way to remember it is start protecting your privacy because it's what we haven't been doing for the last decade, startpage.com. And the reason I actually sought this company out was about a year ago, I heard the news through the media that Google had been identifying people who had the flu on the basis of their searches. Now, I found this extraordinarily creepy that you log on to Google to look something up. You you think of you, them as helping you. You think of you as being in the driver's seat, and here's just this tool you're going to use, kind of like going to an encyclopedia or a dictionary and looking something up. But the reality, as I discovered to my horror, is that it's really, it, it's not, it doesn't quite work that simply, that those guys are actually watching us. And I don't mean to single out Google. You can also talk about Yahoo. You can talk about Bing. You can talk about Ask.com or really any of the major search engines out there. They're all doing this. And what they're doing, they make a record of every search that you make. So every search term you enter onto the Internet, they record. They record it along with your IP address, which identifies your computer, your machine that you're uh, logging in from, or at the very least, your location. And if you use any other services like Yahoo, um, you know, Yahoo Mail or, or Gmail or anything else that identifies you, then it all gets linked into a, a sort of an Uber file. It's kind of the master file on you. And in, in, in understanding the level of the dossier of information that they have on us, it's a 360-degree view of our lives that these companies have now created. And when I say a 360-degree view, I mean these search engine companies know more about us than our coworkers. They know more about us than the IRS or the FBI. Their level of information about us is more than any individual entity in the entire history of, of the human race has ever known. Um, this is the kind of thing that would have made the KGB or, or Hitler or, you know, Stalin under, so, the uh, Soviet Union under Stalin. Those guys would have done anything to get us, anyone, you know, the people in their countries to reveal as much about themselves, their political interests, their, uh, their hobbies, their, their, um, intellectual pursuits, all of the things that we type in there. They would have given anything to have that kind of information. And in fact, the KGB, you know, they set up spies and entire agencies to try to find this information, whereas we just type it into Google for free. You know, it's interesting, when you think about these companies, when was the last time a multi-billion dollar company like Google or, or Yahoo or, or Microsoft, when was the last time they gave you all of their products for free? 
you know, Gmail is free, Yahoo Mail is free, Hotmail is free, um, you know, all of these services that they're making available, Google Street View, Google Maps, Google Calendar, Google Groups, they give you all this stuff for free. And so you've got to kind of scratch your head and say, well, how do they do that? And the answer is those, those are not the products. That's the bait. And the bait is designed to lure you in to type in your most intimate interests so that they can then use that and turn you into the product and sell you back to their marketers. And where this becomes even more disturbing is Google CEO Eric Schmidt recently revealed in, a, in an interview with CNBC, a television interview, during that big Google special they did a couple months ago. He said, if you don't want us to know what you're searching for, you shouldn't be doing those searches in the first place. That we, will, we do record everything that you search for, and we will turn it over to the federal government in response to a Patriot Act request if we're asked. And you may say, well, gee, that's not going to affect me. I'm not doing anything illegal. Well, let me point something out. Back uh, about a year and a half ago, that MIAC report, the Missouri Information Awareness Center report, which is uh, information awareness centers are these kind of creepy law enforcement um, uh, sort of clearinghouses of information. And they exist in, in states all around the country. But the Missouri one actually was leaked to the press and Alex Jones and, and later an activist by the name of Catherine Bleich uh, brought attention to it, and Catherine fought back and got them to rescind the report. But the report itself was chilling. What they said in the report, which was designed to identify potential domestic terrorists, you know, that's pretty scary stuff, and those people could be subject to a Patriot Act request. Those people that they identified as potential domestic terrorists were people who had an interest in third-party candidates like Chuck Baldwin from the Constitution Party or Ron Paul, who ran as a Republican. Um, you know, that anybody who were interested in those candidates was a potential domestic terrorist. I mean, that's ludicrous. That's insane. And that's a huge swath of millions of law-abiding, you know, kind of, uh, uh, patriotic, home-loving Americans. They also identified people with an interest in the Constitution or people who had taken a position on either side of the abortion debate or people who, I mean, the list just went on and on. And where it really chilled me is they said people who have an interest in RFID. And I said, well, we all should have an interest in RFID. Obviously, that includes me. I've written a book on the topic, a best-selling book, devoted seven years of, of research to this topic. And because of that, now I've got these law enforcement folks saying that I'm a potential domestic terrorist because I want to point out a privacy threat by a really insecure and dangerous technology. So when you put all that together... And you say, okay, so I'm not doing anything wrong, but you know what? The people who voted for Chuck Baldwin or Ron Paul weren't doing anything wrong. I wasn't doing anything wrong when I wrote our best-selling book, Spy Chips, about RFID. And yet, according to that document, all of us, you know, tens of millions of us across the country are, quote, potential domestic terrorists. So why does that matter? It matters because these big search engines, Yahoo, Bing, Google, all of them, are, are able to pinpoint and identify who has those interests. So let's say, I'll I'll go back, let me go back to my original example, um, the flu. So Google came up with this, they made a bet with the Centers for Disease Control, and they said, we bet you that we can identify the location of a flu outbreak before you can, before the federal government can. That's frightening. And, And the way we can do it is we have our pulse on everything that's going on in the minds and bodies of all of America, because they type it all into our search engine. And they came up with an algorithm that said if, if they saw certain combinations of searches in the same search session or over you know, the, a span of a certain period of time, that they could identify who actually had the flu based on what they were typing in. And this is sheer conjecture, but let's say, for example, you looked up Robitussin, chicken soup recipes, and uh, your company's policy for days off from work. You know, then at that point they might say, "Ah, oh, well, here's here's somebody who probably has the flu." And at that point, they were like spiders waiting in the web for you to type in your certain combination. And then they went, "Bingo, got another one." They would hone in on your address. They would figure out your IP address, which identifies your location and possibly your computer and your identity. And then they would put a red dot on a map. And after they had a whole bunch of these dots on the map, they said, oh, well, here's some emerging locations where people have the flu. It looks like we're, we're having an outbreak in you know, this community. And then they shared that information with the Centers for Disease Control. Now, they did not share people's names. They didn't share their IP addresses or their personal information, but there was absolutely no reason they couldn't have. They absolutely could have.